Hello, Lou. Welcome to the Digital Alerta Summit 2020. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Um, Same here. Very much looking forward to the presentation. I can tell you that my colleagues who did the tech check with you fell in love with the slides. So I'm very curious to see them now myself. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy the presentation yourself as well. Um, so we'll do our attendees and I hand over to you. You can start. All right, thank you very much. Um, hi everyone, thank you for having me. I'm super excited today to talk to you one of my favorite topic, beauty. Before we get into that, I'd like to talk a bit about myself. My name is Lou, I'm a designer, mainly focused on branding and product design. I was born in China in a small city of nearly 9 million people. After graduating from high school, I did my Bachelor of Communication Design in Melbourne, Australia. Then I did my internship in an ad agency there, and I make, made some Turkish friends in Melbourne, so I fall in love with their culture. Then I traveled to Istanbul and worked in the agency doing website, app design, and branding. Shortly after, I started freelancing. Due to military coup, I had to leave Turkey, and I started my digital nomad journey in Southeast Asia. Now I'm here in my beautiful Berlin apartment and enjoy my best quarantine life. And throughout my design career so far, I've worked in many um, design setups like agencies, product companies, freelancing, also in many design fields like branding, product design, editorial, web design, and many more. Right now I'm building the brand at Pitch it's a Berlin startup founded by people who build Wanderlust. <clears throat> for those who's not familiar with Pitch, it's a modern presentation tool built for teams. We offer features such as live collaboration, many, many stunning templates that you can easily customize, change fonts, colors, uh, styles, and make it fit your own brand. Data integrations, that you can import and keep charts and tables up to date with the latest information. And many built-in integrations of the tools that you probably already use and help your presentation come alive. In the past, I've helped to build many other successful products such as Simplice. It's a portfolio building tool for people who don't code. With simple drag and drop, you can add, adjust, and reorder content and create beautiful websites. We were a very small team, and I worked on the product interface, the website, and many other marketing materials. During my freelance time, I built Wave. It's an IoT project, an app that offers guided meditation tracks, connects to a pillow, vibrates throughout your body in sync with the beats. We took a very different approach from the average meditation app, someone sitting in the sunshine on top of a mountain or something, and made it look cool. Because we want people to feel positive about meditation, it's designed as a destination rather than an escape. Memomi is another project I'm proud of. It's an AR mirror for high-end fashion. We design both the hardware and the software, a big mirror for people to try on clothes, colors, patterns instantly without taking them off. A set of smaller mirrors to record makeup session, try on makeup, hair colors, styles, footwear, and accessories. We had the pleasure of serving many international brands such as Sephora, Luxottica, um, LVMH, Chanel, L'Oreal, and many, many more. During my time freelancing, quite often I receive potential client requests like this one. We're building a groundbreaking product, UX is done, and we just need a designer to create the UI. I also had another client once told me, for her, beauty is a luxury, function comes first. Having worked in many design roles and areas, the idea of this clear distinction between beauty and function is very new to me. It made me think, is visual design just a skin on top of the, on top of the core functionality? In my observation to many young startups, 
it seems like there is a strong focus on the function and dis disregard in beauty. Make it fast, make it work. Just call it MVP and we're good. And I'm sure you are no stranger to this claim, form follows function, made by Louis Sullivan, the American architect nearly a century ago. What he said was, the way something looks should be determined by its purpose. Following Louis, Adolf Luz said, ornamentation was a crime. We could only become civilized and modern once we were free from ornament. Welcome to the modernist movement. Until now, we can still see this mass housing here and there in Berlin. Low cost, concrete paneled, quickly constructed. But today, this development is considered as disastrous and a cultural loss. Stefan Zeigmaster said it best. It's like a billion people live in these shitholes that were only made to function, but did one thing which was functioning. Without beauty, we fail. Think about Google Glass. It's a variable voice controlled smart glass that offers an AR experience by using visual, audio, location-based inputs to provide relevant information. Google Glass did not receive a huge success. It was available in public in May 15th, 2014, but quickly discontinued January the next year after only about nine months. The lack of beauty is definitely one of the reasons for its failure. I like what Daniela said here. Is it useful? Of course it is. Do I look like a tool? Yeah, I'm not going to wear it. We were too focused on the idea of functioning. We forgot to ask ourselves, who are we designing for? Humans. As human connect with the world through emotion and design without emotion, without beauty is a void of emotions. Beauty plays a big role in communicating function because our brain makes assumptions of how something functions based on how it looks. Take this one as an example. Both of them are input fields, but the one on the right, rectangular with inner shadow, the subtle gradient on the button, it removes any doubt of its function. The one, the, the one on the left side, the line input field, feels less encouraging for people to fill in, but it looks minimal and sleek. The one on the right is great for long forms, and the one on the left is perfectly for a modern fashion look. Take this example further. The left one looks more playful because of the fine gradient, while the one on the right is more serious and formal. Make your work look beautiful because beautiful things function better. Earlier this year, before we launched Pitch, we made a social media post teasing the product. Since the product was not public, we could not show much of its UI or features, but believe it or not, people said they can already sense a good, incredible UX we can only say that it's the beautiful visual and the smooth animation that convinced our audiences. Some researchers indirectly backs my assumptions up. A study by Stanford University shows that the number one factor to evaluate a website credibility is the appeal of the overall visual design, including the layout, typography, font size, and color schemes. And a study on the parent usability versus inherent usability found that the users are strongly influenced by the beauty of any given interface, even when they try to evaluate the underlying functionality. When we are relaxed, our brains are more flexible and more likely to find the workarounds for difficult problems. We are more tolerant of problems that we find attractive. Separating beauty and function, UX and UI is like separating how we think and how we feel. But this is not how our brains work. In reality, how we think is always associated with how we feel. Our rational decisions are not as rational as we'd like to think. 
Not only that, beauty also adds emotion and personality to our products, making a functioning product delightful. Now, since we talk about emotion and personality, I like to show you some of my brand work at Pitch. Our team built a strong visual style across our marketing channels with a distinctive 3D illustration style, the color palette, bold use of typography and negative spaces. But we also have a consistent style within the UI. And even for the free stickers, we have a consistent look and feel. Having this style inside and outside the app give our product and brand a strong personality. And this has become one of the reasons people enjoy using our product. At Page, we don't believe in form follows function. Beauty is function. The idea of form follows function is outdated. Instead, I believe that there are many forces that involved in the project and every force influence the form. The force might be audience needs, client desires, ethical obligations, and many, many more. And yes, it's a challenge for us to take all the aspects into consideration and find the right balance between beauty and function. Here today, I'd like to share with you some of the tips and tricks based on my personal experience. First of all, the success criteria is an important ex uh, aspect to define. For example, imagine you are designing a music streaming app. What will determine the success of the app? Is it to help people to discover new music as easy and as quickly as possible? Is it to reach as many audiences as possible? Or rather keep it premium, maybe with less rich, but a higher margin? Who is the market of the app? And how will they or are they willing to pay for the app? Have a clear measurement of success will help us to decide when we should focus more on the beauty side of things and when we should focus more on the pure function. The second tip is inspired by Walt Disney, the creator of Disneyland. Every year, millions of people visit the park all over the world, and it's always deliver a consistently good experience to people. The secret of Walt Disney is that it's not about adding more stuff, but rather make a good experience better. This also applies to um, us building digital products stay focused, make existing features good, and make a good feature better. If you use pitch, you might have noticed some little big details. On the, um, on the left side is the reaction feature, a place where you can show your feedback to a specific um, slide with emoji. The nice and subtle wiggle animation makes it a joy to add reaction. On the right side, this is a typing indicator of our live collaboration feature. Many other products have this collaboration feature, but most are just showing a name tag on a cursor or a colored bounding box. We didn't settle for that. The subtle loading animation next to the name tag keeps you on track if a teammate is editing a content block right now. Number three is about working a team. I believe it's important to bring a team from all aspects at the start of the project. Designers, developers, uh, product owners, PM, we're a team. The design process requires the collective working. Have inputs from people with different skill sets will help us identify problems and find solutions more efficiently. On the other hand, while listening to people's feedback, following common practices, and the data coming from um, user research, design is also a way to express our own experience, our vision, and imagination. Many people say that designers are not artists, but I believe a good designer has an artist's heart. We should have the courage to break standards and have a, have a different language. 
And coming from a Chinese background, and I worked for many international clients, I also like to highlight that we should be mindful with a different view on beauty in other culture. Here's two pictures of a shopping street in Berlin and Hong Kong. Compared to the minimalistic style in Berlin, Hong Kong street is full of neon signs and advertisements. Very cyberpunk, right? You can see similar things in digital design as well. Here, the German TFC is bold and clean, use limited color palette, and has a lot of negative space. The Chinese version has a lot of text and colors and looks relatively busy. There are many reasons for the difference. For example, a lot of times as Chinese people, we add text within the image due to the lim limitation of Chinese web font embedding. And that's basically because we have too many characters and a font file is very huge for web embedding. Also, the, the lack of italic fonts, no uppercase or lowercase, no space for word separation, makes the visual look lack of hierarchy. And the complexity of inputting Chinese characters cause that there are a lot of links on the site because people prefer to click than to type. But there, that's enough information for another talk. And I don't think I should dive deep in this talk today. But my point is the definition of what's beautiful or what's functional can vary from culture to culture. Lastly, and most importantly, to find the right balance of beauty and function is love your craft. If you are creating with love and care, you will naturally think about function and beauty. You will be thoughtful with your design. Because in the end, it's not about choosing beauty or function and sacrificing the other. It's about choosing to be thoughtful about your design. And it shows in every little detail of your work. When we designed the icons for Pitch UI, we took inspiration from the UI font model and developed a set of icon based on the font's construction. This way, the text and icon will work in harmony. To make sure the icon will look sharp in wide range of screen resolutions, operation systems, and also fit in our app aesthetics, we tested the icon with different stroke widths. We created multiple versions for each icon and made sure it's intuitive and pretty, as well as a field version to test. Well, icons might be small and seems insignificant, and there are even many places online that offers them for free. Why didn't we take the shortcut? Because we care about what we're making. Because if you love your craft, you will see details and symmetry. You will consider what's useful and what's visually pleasing. You will see what's right. Make it fast, make it work, make it beautiful. Well, Thank you very much for your attention. That concludes my topic today. Uh, well, I'm ready for your questions. Thanks a lot, Lou. That was so nice to hear and see. Uh, so I can definitely understand now why my colleagues said they fell in love <laughs> with the slides. Um, I think there were a lot of very valuable messages in your presentation. So now I'm, of course, curious to uh, ask Thomas if we have questions in the chat. Yeah, indeed, we have some questions. Um, before we uh, go to them, I want to suggest another thing on our website, because we have already had um, contact with Pitch on our eighth meetup at uh, Digitale Leute, we were, have been in Berlin and there we had Pitch at, as a guest and Fabi Fabrizio um, had a talk about collaboration as a driver and you can right now uh, look it up on our website and watch that one too. So just a small hint here that we have more about that topic and about Pitch on our website. All right, let's go to the first question. Um, 
What does the perfect briefing look like for you? Right. I think it's a quite big topic and I can't really give you a perfect example, but I think that really depends from project to project. Um, I guess when it comes to more visual stuff or like branding, I usually prefer a more loose project. Um, but when it comes to more, um, like when it comes to product building, I would like to have more specific um, requirements. So, because I think um, I like to have the creativity or the freedom on the visual side or the beauty side, <clears throat> but then when it comes to like features and requirements, I really need to know what's the best for the audiences. So it's a bit hard to answer this question, but if you can go a bit more specific on what exactly the brief is for, maybe I could get a better suggestion. I guess, especially if you, as a designer, see yourself as an artist, which I completely see so. I don't understand why people would say designers are not artists. Um, of course, the creativity part should be given. Um, so uh, very static briefing is probably, yeah, the, the outcome would, wouldn't be that beautiful maybe in the end as it could be. So, yeah. I guess we have some more questions and maybe we will get a follow up question on that in the chat, but we uh, first go to Thomas and ask uh, about the next question. Absolutely. And the next question is about um, uh, how to find consent in a team uh, about design. We all know it. Uh, we had a great talk yesterday about how critics and design work. Like I like this more. I like this more. It's not very helpful indeed. Um, so what is your take on how to find consent in a team um, when it's about design? Um, do you mind explaining the question again? I, how to find, I couldn't how get the word. Consent. If you're in a team and you have to decide on a design, um, mm -hmm. there are probably some people who like it immediately and some people who say, no, that's not my type. How mm -hmm. do you make mm -hmm. it um, finding a consent in the end? It's a very interesting topic um, because for me, I worked in very small teams with uh, two, three people. Um, I also now work at Pitch, which is a company with a lot of people and a lot of designers and designers here are very confident because mostly are senior. And um, it's, to be honest, it's not easy to satisfy everyone. But what I find is because within a brand team, the people are very experienced uh, and the teammates I have are really good. Um, I think in the end, we always end up with a result that everyone's happy somehow. But yes, to go to the point to make everyone happy is very tough. But like in a small team, definitely is easier, especially for example, in some place, there's a team uh, with basically everyone's a designer and it's very easy to come to an agreement um, and slowly you build the trust. I think trust is also, it's easier and may take shorter time within a small team because you talk to each other um, every day. And then in a bigger team, it takes a bit of time and patience to build the trust as well. But like during my time um, at the page, I already see the trust is building up. Um, I think because I started pitch as a freelancer before I joined them full time. Um, during I was freelancing for pitch when we did the first pitch.com. I had way more feedback versus the one that I'm doing now. So trust is one thing. Also have good people you work with and trust me, if one solution is right, then people will see that it's right. And I guess in the hiring process, you also have a look at the portfolio. And if you see that the design style doesn't fit at all, you will probably won't hire this person, right? So the team yeah. is probably already on the same wave with the um, with the style at some point. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I think. Yeah, please. I think like so far, what's successful about our marketing stuff or the branding stuff is that just because the style we have, we attracted a lot of people who appreciate the style. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the more you show your style, the more you attract, and the better you are built. Right. For sure. Um, Thomas, I guess we have one more question. 
Indeed, um, it's about the evolution of the design at Pitch. Um, when we, when you launched Pitch uh, as, a, as a project, um, we we didn't see much of it, of course. But of course, we we, we saw something, uh, and now the product is is uh, done. We can use it more or less. Of course, design is never done, but uh, uh, there's a lot there. And uh, the question is, how was the evolution of pitch? What did you learn in the process over the years? What did you change? Uh, what were important learnings there? Mm -hmm. I think I can only speak for the marketing area or the branding area because that's what I'm working on every day. The product side, I can talk shortly. When I just joined uh, I try to build a deck and I find quite a few bugs and I was like, oh, this is not so easy to use. But now we in introduce so many cool features that even I can't wait to show off to my friends. Um, like, for example, the love collaboration stuff. You can have a conference call straight within pitch. You don't need any other applications. You can see the cursor and people are talking to each other. It's super awesome. Um, but like back to the branding side, um, it's a process so far. When before I started freelancing for a pitch, um, we didn't really have a brand. Rather, we had a really pretty style of the 3D illustration. So the brand was actually built on the style from 3D artists. And we had this iconic hand, we call it chubby hand, um, to basically on our side to demonstrate some feature areas in a very abstract way mostly because we can't really show any specific feature. So you, you see like hands is interacting with things. Um, yeah, basically the stuff we talk about in the first website is very abstract. You don't really know any feature. People love it because they see the nice animation and visuals. Um, and then we thought, you know, this hands, we also see like people start copying our style. Um, so the hands is not becoming something we can own or something too special. So we developed um, with another agency together, we de developed this glossy panel um, that represents our, first of all, the visual style um, of the 3D illustration. Second is the glossy panel, it's a symbol for pitch app itself. Also the slides that you can create within pitch so this is one of the elements now we feel is ownable. Also, we try to make all the visuals look meaningful. I think you've seen, maybe some of you see other companies they can do really stunning 3D campaign, but maybe after you watch it, it's not too meaningful. You don't really know what's happening, except it's pretty. What we try to do is it has to be meaningful. It has to be ownable to our um, product. Uh, does that answer the question? I guess so. I would say so. And I know that we have one last question uh, in the chat. So I hand over to Thomas for the last time. Yes. Uh, the question comes from Rosa Mariah. Um, and she asks, in your experience, how do you best measure the benefit of form versus function? For example, a feature that fulfills goal but if you make it more beautiful how do you do that um a feature that fulfills its goal i think that comes back to what is the success criteria is it just people are going to fill up this form in a neutral way and you don't surprise them or do you want them to feel happy that they feel the form which that also we have to measure that by, is it a form for say that it's a government form? It's a very long form. Maybe you don't want to, you don't want to add too much visual surprises to it or too much interaction or animation. But if it's a form, say you want to encourage people to buy something or sign up for something, you might want to just build more emotional connection to push people to actually use um, the form you are creating. Yeah, I guess it's uh, hard to tell 
the solution for this uh, question. But maybe if you have some time, you can also join our chat and maybe uh, some of our attendees will have some more questions to you. At this point, I uh, really want to thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure to have you here. And uh, thanks a lot for your time and the openness. Um, we wish you all the best. Stay self safe and healthy. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward now to uh, the last talk of today by Stefan Tilkoff from InnoQ. And um, yeah, see you soon. Thanks, Lou. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.